Amid the tension and concentration of an operating room, a woman's life is on the line. Doctors and nurses work intently to bring her through. A routine enough occurrence, except that this woman is allergic to any form of anesthesia. She is undergoing her operation using hypnosis as the only anesthetic. Heavier until it comes to rest at your side. Can she rely on the power of her mind to transport her to another place, a place without pain? Open that door. Get in the back of the bus. A man is plunged into a frightening ordeal. Crucial details become buried in his memory. Details he will recall with the help of hypnosis. What strange force enables a policeman to recall the face of an assailant after living through the trauma of being shot? He will draw on the hidden and mysterious powers of the mind. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. You shall see nothing, hear nothing, dream of nothing, but Svengali. Sven Gali, Sven Gali. Sven Gali. Sven Gali. Sven Gali. Yeah. One, two, and three. You're all chickens at the party. <laughs> Stand up and walk around. Let's go. Many people think of hypnosis as frivolous because it is often used that way. Hey, look at those chickens, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is a new dance. Hypnosis. For hundreds of years, a word connected with charlatans, evil magic, and stage shows. Today, doctors, scientists, police, and others are finding hypnosis an increasingly important tool. Hypnosis gives us startling new insights into ourselves, it gives us a shortcut, a threshold to that mysterious, elusive area we call the subconscious mind. Dr. William Kroger has pioneered medical uses of hypnosis. It is not a trance. It is not a state of unconsciousness. It is not remotely related to sleep. Rather, it's a state of super alertness. It's a process. He believes the key to achieving a hypnotic state is the misdirection of attention. I could show you. Uh, what I mean by misdirection of attention, by holding this coin here, I take this coin and I get you to look over here. So as I get you to look over here, I do something here. All we really know is that it works. Through trial and error, hypnotists have learned that there are many ways to reach into the mind and unlock the vast unused powers of the brain. Deeper and deeper, more and more relaxed. Dr. Ira Greenberg elicits responses typical of most hypnotized persons. Your left hand and arm are becoming lighter and lighter. As their arms lighter float upward, so lighter. does their conviction that they are experiencing the altered consciousness we call hypnosis. I'd like you to let yourself go back to a happy period in your childhood. Go back, back, back in time. You're five years old. And where are you right now? Backyard. And what are you doing in the backyard? Playing King of the Hill. Playing King of the Hill. And who's playing with you? 
I was in the backyard with my brother. There's a lot of snow on the ground. And we dug out a circle around the backyard. And we just ran around on our bicycles. Ah, oh, that's marvelous. Start coming awake now. I'm going to count backward. Five, coming awake now. Four, even more awake. Three, more and more awake. Two, one, zero. Open your eyes, wide awake. I could recall all the details. It was, I could see my backyard and I had a big hill of ice plant. It took a while for my arm to get up there. I remember it. it took a, I just sort of was more comfortable laying there, and then it just sort of went up by itself. And yet I always felt as though I uh, knew where I was. As you know, Don, what we're going to do is provide a demonstration of you going into a hypnotic state. Dr. Joseph Barber, director of UCLA's pain control clinic, uses hypnosis. Okay. Okay. And I'd like you to let yourself begin right now, slowly, comfortably, and to go deeper and deeper with every breath you take. An individual who is experiencing a state of hypnosis which can be characterized as a somnambulistic state, appears in certain respects to be wide awake. And although Don can talk, a hypnotic subject tends not to talk unless it's really necessary. When, you when we compare the brainwave activity of a normal waking state to a hypnotized condition, no difference can be seen. Is the alpha wave. Scientists still don't really know what forces are at work only that something does happen. Under hypnosis, this subject has the ability to control body activity beyond his reach in a normal waking state, providing a dramatic demonstration of mind over body. Under medical supervision, this man's skin is pierced in two places. No bleeding from this side, and just the right amount of bleeding from this side. He has been asked to bleed from only one of the two puncture wounds. In spite of the fact that he has never been hypnotized before, he will attempt to control his body in a way that seems impossible. Okay. It looks like this side is warmer and this side cooler. Is that right? Right. Make this side even cooler and this side even warmer. Okay. And what you can notice is that of the two sides, one is bleeding more than the other, although... Incredibly, a single drop of blood appears. A hypodermic puncture. During surgery, for instance, if you want to have the patient bleed less, there is a mechanism which the patient has control of. We don't understand the mechanism, but it's obviously there. Eastern yogis have shown similar control, but after lifetimes of study, could hypnosis be a shortcut to powers beyond our imaginings? It's important that the public realize that very often what they see on the stage is not hypnosis, but entertainment. Mark Yellen was 24 when he learned he had a form of cancer known as Hodgkin's disease. Seeking to gain back control of his own body, he turned to hypnosis as an adjunct to traditional therapy. I turned to hypnosis as a way of keeping my attitude together and giving me a positive outlook going through my treatments. A deep breath. Working with Gene Campo of the Newton Center for Clinical Hypnosis, Mark uses a technique called guided imagery to spur on his body's defense system. You are going to take a tour of your body and you're going to inspect your lymph glands. What is it you are seeing? I see myself kind of walking through my body. I walked into this room, found myself in a room with lymph nodes lying all over the place. So I uh, proceeded to get all the lymph nodes fired up. Their attitudes changed. If we have a patient who is sick with something and he can imagine the reverse of that, in some mysterious way, uh, he's apt to get better. I do a lot of camping up in Yosemite. 
So I basically took a waterfall I had seen and then envisioned myself standing under this waterfall. And then all of a sudden it went from seeing myself under the waterfall to seeing the water rushing through my neck and down through my chest and into my abdomen through the lymph system and just flushing it clean. Through hypnosis, my attitudes have changed immensely. I've uh, become much more confident than I ever was. I've uh, been able to accomplish things I never thought I could. I now feel I'm a winner instead of a loser. After the treatments, doctors operated but found no signs of the cancer. Mark now walks on the road of life. Could hypnosis be a signpost pointing us toward a new and better way of living? In the late 1700s, Franz Anton Mesmer formulated his theory of animal magnetism to explain the remarkable phenomena we call hypnosis. Mesmer established clinics where he used magnets, passes of the hand, and strange magnetized tubs to get people into a hypnotized condition. As word of his successes grew, so did controversy, until finally he was characterized as a fake and driven from scientific circles by a group headed by Benjamin Franklin. I had great difficulty getting my colleagues to accept hypnosis. Dr. Ron Katz, chairman, UCLA's Department of Anesthesiology. Mrs. Strom came to see me over a year ago. She needed to have a breast biopsy and possibly uh, a mastectomy. Since she had previously been anesthetized and literally been in a coma for days after the operation, we decided to go ahead and attempt the operation under hypnosis. Just imagine a giant mold filled with ice surrounding your breast, making your breast colder and colder. And I had a mental image of it being sort of a mystical, magical type of a thing, nothing uh, that was really useful to normal people like me. The colder it becomes, the number it will become, till it becomes so cold and so numb that you're barely aware that your breast is there. And since you like to ski, you can imagine yourself at Mammoth or somewhere where you've been. You just concentrate on the ski. Bits of snow float up, which reinforces the cold sensation on the breast. At first, Kay was skeptical. But in spite of her doubts, she found herself being transported to a new and separate reality. I could hear the doctors and nurses talking. It was like a radio was playing in the background, but really didn't have anything to do with me. People on the slopes moved out of the way to just watch me coming down. Hypnosis took her to a distant place, a place without pain, a world that had apparently existed all along, deep within her mind. If I ever had to have surgery again, that's the only way I would consider doing it at all. The person has a greater ability to experience fantasy, and to experience that fantasy is real. The person also has the ability to remember things that are otherwise not so easily remembered. When a burglary call set Officer Jim Van Pelt and his partner rolling, as dramatized here, he had no idea how far he was to go. Captain Mike Nielsen, Los Angeles Police Investigative Unit. The trauma of the incident, the physical damage that was caused by the bullets, the speed with which things transpired, all served 
to lock these events into Van Pelt's subconscious mind. And TV set being turned on. With a police artist keeping careful notes, psychologist Dr. Martin Reiser hypnotized Jim and then had him watch the crime again, as though seeing a documentary on a TV screen within his mind. Two, three. Okay, the screen is lighting up. My partner and I are working the mid-watch in the Northeast Division, and we're the first ones out of the parking lot. When we receive a call to see the man, a burglary suspect there now. 11 out of 31, Roger, on the call, 459 there now at 2230 in Maribyrnong. My partner and I both exit out of the car. I look over and I see a male Negro. My partner talks to the individual. Let me see your identification. And gets no response to any questioning at all. He pats him down, which is a normal procedure to check for weapons. And I'm standing directly in front of the suspect, and something seems amiss. Suddenly, the suspect let out a blood-curdling scream. Yeah! I found myself laying on my back. I raised up in effort to bring him down. I fall back, and I hear him running down the street. I was suddenly alone. Relying on his notes, as well as experience and training, the artist narrowed in on the details crucial to an accurate composite drawing. His hair is cut short. Now look again, as you did before, at this corrected composite drawing and tell me what you think. Well, that's good. That's the man that shot me. By watching a mental movie, Officer Van Pelt reached into his clouded memory and furnished a precise description that aided in the arrest of the suspect. Details of astonishing clarity retrieved through hypnosis. We can introduce information obtained via hypnosis. It's up to the jury to decide how much credibility they will give that information. For most people, life is rarely so dramatic. Children go to school, adults go to work, life goes on. Routine. Unless the town you live in is called Chowchilla, and you happen to be Ed Ray. On my afternoon run, I made about three stops, and I was going down Road 16, and I turned on Avenue 21. And I saw a white van down there. And when I got up close, the front door was open over the white line. Open that door. Get in the back of the bus. Deep in a nightmare, many of the events became confused and blocked in Ed Ray's mind. Well, in the case of Ed Ray, just as in other cases that we've had, uh, after he'd been hypnotized, instead of asking him to remember the license plate, we prepared him with an appropriate image involving uh, the use of the imagination. The world comes to you in five senses, and all that data is stored in the five senses. Nothing is ever forgotten. The brain stores everything, forgets nothing. It stores all information in five senses, and it can be tapped. In cases of this type, we give them an image that involves the five senses. They're walking along a beautiful beach. It's a warm, hot summer day. There's a blazing sun overhead. You feel the hot, dry sand. See the waves as they're thrashing and smashing. Step in the cool, wet, squishy sand. Taste the salty spray. Gently guided from the beach back to the crime scene, 
Ray was told he could see through the lens of a camera and could zoom in to study in detail what his conscious mind had blocked. Under hypnosis, he gave the FBI all but one of the crucial license numbers of his abductor's van. Si je meurs, je veux qu'on m'enterre dans une car où il y a du bon vin. Dans une car, oui, 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 dans une car. A remarkable experiment in teaching is underway in a San Francisco classroom. Dans une car, oui, 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 dans une car. Alors je vais lire le dialogue. Et toi? Bon, alors faisons ça cinq fois, cinq cycles. Bon, commencez. These people are increasing their learning speed by using a technique which is enhanced by hypnosis, breaking through learning barriers, controlling pain, psychotherapy, and behavior modification are just a few of the current uses of hypnosis. Every day that passes, hypnosis is becoming a more important factor in our lives. What about 50 years from today? Possibly we'll find self-hypnosis being taught in schools for everyone to use. Possibly motion pictures will become unnecessary, obsolete, when compared with the vivid pictures in our own minds. For if the mind is truly the gateway to the heavens, hypnosis may be the key that unlocks that gate. 